finding light is the artist's interpretation of the meaning and purpose of life. This bronze is the artist's depiction of Narcissus looking into the water. Finding light is about overcoming Narcissus's trance, where Narcissus saw his own reflection in the water and became entranced by it, then took his own life because he believed he could not have his object of desire. Understanding the difference between the narcissist and the empath. The narcissist seeks dominant control, while the empath is highly sensitive to the emotions of others. Creating Compassion, requested by the Thomas Merton Center, Canada. And what is the highest expression of being human? The highest expression of being human is the extent to which you can love someone else without the expectation that it is necessarily going to be reciprocated. That to me is a form where you're willing to give without any expectation of return. There's no uh, element in that dynamic that is predicated on any kind of belief. It doesn't require that you believe in, in God or anything else. And so there's lots of room for us to be able to uh, come together. Compassion means a lot of things to different people, but the central message of compassion is that you should think about how your actions affect others. Compassion is a practical virtue, and it involves practice. <laughs> and I think it gets easier with time. The more you do it, you know, I, I don't, I just, the more you do it, the happier you are. So when you talk about compassion, you're talking about, about kindness. My grandmother, uh, she had a spiritual name uh, called uh, Waskone, which is a translated means a being of light. And when, when there's reference made to, to the women in our language, we say Medimue. Translated, that means uh, beings of the heart. Now, when, when there's reference made to, to grandmothers, to mothers, it is always in, 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 uh, in reflection of, of, uh, of kindness and compassion. So when you talk about compassion, that's what comes in the forefront of my mind. The first thing that comes to my mind when I hear that word is love and, the, and the, both the power and the cost of love. So I think of compassion as not something light and frothy or something highly personal, but when I think of it, I think of compassion as a way of life that could change our world. When you can imagine what something is like, you can then enter into that more distinct world of empathy, compassion, and understanding. But if the imagination doesn't lead you there, if you're not touched or moved by anything, then the heart and the mind working in conjunction, it doesn't happen. You remain insulated, removed, withdrawn, indifferent, narcissistic, whatever. So the imagination, the moral imagination in particular, plays an extraordinary role, I think, in helping people to learn uh, to be empathetic and to refine their capacity to be compassionate. I see compassion as being central to our survival. And I see empathy as our connective tissue. If we don't have empathy, we cannot care about the others. And um, the ability to care about those who don't have 
the ability to take care of themselves necessarily or who are vulnerable in some way, we're a failed society if we can't do that. So I think the two are so inextricably linked, but I think the, the core of our humanity is empathy. And from that, we refine our humanity by demonstrating compassion. In a normal, healthy person, there is a natural empathy. There's a, um, now that religion and uh, morality and stuff is, it, it, it's part of its function is to develop that and sensitize you further and bring your compassion to a higher and to a purer level. Um, Jesus would call purity of heart. But to me, the natural basis is that there's a natural empathy that, uh, that, uh, that's, that's innate inside of us. Compassion means that you want every single being on this planet not to suffer. And great compassion means that you commit yourself to help to alleviate the suffering of all beings. So that's what compassion means to me. You know, I was lucky enough to be with the Dalai Lama last May, where we made that the whole theme, compassion. And I, I do think the Buddhist tradition has given us some refinement of vocabulary. We also have cheapened the word love, I think, in the Christian world. And when the uh, Dalai Lama or the Buddhists talk about this ability to actually feel with another person, so you're not standing so much in your shoes but in their shoes and uh, experiencing the reality from their side, I, I like that. It also has a component that talks to self-compassion, mm -hmm. which I really think is probably the harder of the two. Yeah. I feel from my own experience, it's so much easier to emote compassion for other people, more so than be compassionate for myself, accepting of myself, accepting where I falter. Mm -hmm. But I believe that you need to develop self-compassion first in order to practice compassion to others. So it has a beautiful little merry-go-round kind of experience to it. I have been, since I was 16, since I had sort of turned on to the mystical tradition mm -hmm. in Christianity and particularly in Buddhism, I've been living in the contradiction of one voice in my head saying, give everything away, you know, put on the hair shirt, go live as a hermit, whatever, or at least go join a monastery, right? And the other which was, no, you decided to get married, you decided to live in the marketplace, you have an obligation now, and you have to go forward and be the best success that you can be. I've now learned that I can have those two voices inside my head happening simultaneously, and it's up to me to reconcile the paradox. You don't, sorry, um, there, are, there are a lot of people that are just alone and until they have someone who's willing to walk alongside with them, um, they, they don't know how to, to grab out and, and take a hold of the help that is available. To them. It's a slow step-by-step -step process to get them to a place where they can believe that about themselves. So there's something going on here. So while we're 
quite quick to point to all the terrible things that are going on in the world and how fundamentalism is, um, in a sense, sabotaging religion and putting up divides and people living inside of their own boundaries. There's lots of other evidence through the ordinary events of the day-to-day -day life, mm -hmm. such as the events that you're seeing through some of these not-for-profits that you're working with, that give us hope that, that maybe there is actually something going on at an almost imperceptible level uh, around the collective conscious. For us, we want to look at creating compassion as a lifestyle. Uh, in touching all the things that are important to a young person, their friends, their school, the, the things that they love and dream towards. So for us, how to achieve scale on compassion, I think you have to start with young people. I think you have to look at the education system as a distribution point. And then I think you also have to look at social media, technology, celebrities, cap bringing it all together. And that's what we've tried to do with WeDay. And we're, we're not fully there yet. We're always learning and growing. But I think we're pretty darn close because we track our alumni and we know that 80% of our alumni keep volunteering. And 83% keep giving to a charity. And 79% vote in the last national election. And, and when we look at compassion, part of compassion is action. And those are some pretty good stats for impact. You become compassionate because others summon you to be compassionate. Uh, they pull it out of you. They need you to be compassionate. And where you probably felt, I could never do this, you, you do. Yeah, but you do see that. This, yeah, I saw that in these men who were actually attending to other men in the hospice, in the, in the prison. I mean, there was a love and a joy in being able, I think, to give, because I think it is, I think it is really the most um, important thing for us to be able not to be given to, but to give. <laughs> you know, that's more joy in that. The Church of Jesus Christ, as I understand it, has to lift up the example of the one we call Lord and Savior. And by lifting up that example in the most creative and powerful ways we can, hope to touch the souls which we believe are uh, the image of God. There's already the sense of compassion. Sometimes it has to be awakened. Sometimes it has to be quickened. Sometimes it has to be shaken. Compassion. Oh, yeah. It goes a long way. And there are everyday examples, often of women, who make great sacrifices for those in their family who are ill, for a husband whose job is not working out, for a neighbor who doesn't seem to have enough food in their house, so what would seem simple things and yet together they would make up a compassionate life and I think compassion is very ex it's a very available way to talk about how do you love you get to the true essence of someone through their brokenness in in their humanity you you see them when you can break down through that barrier of uh, the facade and, and see them in their, in their true state. And in that true state, somewhere is this wonderful, inexplicable connective tissue that causes people, for example, to volunteer the way. Uh, and I see it all the time, I see I see people doing extraordinary things uh, to meet the needs of other human beings from time to time. Sometimes it takes a, a great big tragedy to bring that feeling out, but nonetheless it's always there. Uh, when we have uh, the great earthquake in Haiti, uh, the great tsunami in the Indian Ocean, feelings of the people of the world rise to incredible heights and the generosity of the people of the world just flows out in these directions and they don't stop much to think about the cost of that to themselves and that's that's I think there's something really good about human life at that point and and 
the practice of compassion is to help that experience be not rare, but, uh, but constant and universal. It's this notion of transformation to a higher state of consciousness that has embedded within it the realization of compassion, humility, joy, power from within, rather than needing to look to others to define who it is that you are. So these are all elements, and all of it can be approached if you have the proper intention and are willing to explore this deep journey into yourself. And my suggestion is that a person would do that. Academics, every parent wants to send their kid to a good school. Part of it's music. Whether they want to or not, Saturday afternoon they get dragged to you know piano or violin or whatever it might be. Part of it's sports. I could ask any parent to tell me what sport their kids play. But what about service? What about compassion? In a very secular age that we live in, where does that fit? And that's part of being a well-rounded young person. And so I dream of the day that that's a pillar. Just as much as parents think of sports or academics or music and the arts, they think of compassion, they think of empathy, they think of service as a pillar of a well-rounded young person. I think that the main thing is that is understanding that we're all, you know, brothers and sisters, whether we think so or not. And I think it's a responsibility of everybody to try in the best way they can. If you can do nothing more than be kind to people, that's a step in the right direction. See live feed from the artist studio gallery at Villa Concuore. At the very moment, while sending a photo of this painting titled Compassion on his cell phone to artist, S. Brooke Anderson in Vancouver, Canada, this light appeared in her hallway. Note the centre of the light and the shape of the painting. 